What is going on, my sprudes and spruettes? Welcome back to Dropped Under Plastic, the hobby. What? The the podcast. The, the podcast about the miniature hobby. enthusiast. <laughs> Oof. I don't know what we do. I, I don't, don't think, I don't know what we say. I don't think we've done this lately. It's not ingrained enough in our head. We're only like 13 episodes deep. Yeah, we are. Lucky number 13. This is 13. 13. Is, yeah. And no guests. No Just guests. Fuck them. But there is a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. <laughs> We're in a different space right now. Right. We are not in your grungy basement. We are in my grungy basement. But it's not very grungy at all. No. I this is John's it. newly finished basement that he just cleaned for me because his wife made him clean it. Because she respects me still, and John doesn't. No. <laughs> I got back last night from D&D at 9 o'clock, yeah. and I had to clean my fucking house till 11.30. <laughs> Your entire house? Yeah, well, yeah, pretty much. We're only going to be here. Right, in this one room. <laughs> and this room was already clean, so because it just got done. It doesn't have time to be dirty yet. Yeah. I cleaned yeah. up all the construction dust and the cheat rock dust and the sawdust. There was still all that stuff? You were painting in here with that dust? No. No, I did that after it was finished before i started getting the paint and stuff in okay okay so it looks, but I'm it looks very nice well i appreciate everyone who that. can't be here it looks very nice this is john's new hobby space his new video space he's got this sick desk back here that you can't see if you're listening to the audio version but check out the video it's uh it's, it's nice it's really nice space and what are we going to be doing tonight in this space oh, we're going to be painting oh yeah it's paint night it's paint night we're going to try to not do things related to uh, air quotes work right because you know whenever me and john hang out it's for you know it's just basically for the podcast um or it's because some big painters in town and we're doing some like video project with them or something like that me and john never just hang out to have fun or play games right or now stuff for our painting classes like yes that's another level of work that we're doing speaking of ooh, <laughs> segue <laughs> there's a class that we're teaching in los angeles in the burbank area at Geeky Tees and Games, uh, buying a ticket gets you one seat to the class. It gets you access to the digital course on how to paint the Duchess, the vampire miniature, the vampire miniature itself, obviously, and something we're calling a quick reference guide. Yeah, which is not so quick to create. No, I found out. <laughs> but I'm having a lot of fun in Adobe InDesign making this really pretty looking uh, PDF that where it's going to be printed out, laminated, spiral bound. So in case you get paint on it, you can just like wipe it off and it's, you know. Yeah. But maybe yeah. maybe that's the purpose because maybe we have a section on there for you to paint on. Oh. What? That, okay. That's a solid idea. And you didn't bring that up before. But you're kind of blowing my mind right now. Okay. That's a All great right. idea. All right. Well, I mean, it's, it's... I know exactly where that will go, too. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sick. Okay. But yeah, Burbank area, if you're in Los Angeles and you want to take a class from us, it's two days long, eight hours each about how to paint the Duchess and get better at miniature painting. Check it out. Linked in the show notes. Yeah. And more importantly, you're going to hang out with us and have fun. <laughs> yeah. And make fun of Scott. <laughs> <laughs> For not getting any references. No, no. So if you want to be a part of that... And play games. Like, uh, I'm designing uh, a game that we're going to be playing in our miniature painting class. Oh, okay. I thought for a moment I forgot what you were talking about the class. And I was like, holy cow, you're making like a miniature war game? Yeah, I'm making my own miniature war game. <laughs> um, it's kind of like Monopoly with minis. <laughs> Uh, it's not what Monopoly is already. True, true. <laughs> They're cooler minis. Okay. It's like, it is still a thimble, but it's like the thimble has big muscle high, arms. Oh, okay. It's like higher detail thimble. <laughs> yeah. High resolution, <laughs> resin printed thimble. And then instead of the money, uh, Monopoly money, it's John Bucks. Okay. Yeah. So that's obviously, that's a no brainer. A no brainer. So see, see that's a Kickstarter. The top edition of Monopoly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and actually the rules, I didn't want to spend much time on those. So it's just Monopoly rules. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, that was the easy part. You just reskinned Monopoly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They've done it themselves so many times. That's true. Why there not? is, bringing it back to minis, there's there's a 40K version of Monopoly. There is. Okay, yeah, yeah. There's a 40K version of Monopoly. There's a 40K version of... Shoots and Ladders? <laughs> yep. Candyland? No. <laughs> it's, it's Shoots. It's S-H-O-O-T-S. If, if, if there was a 40K version of Candyland, like, what would... You know how, like, every single section is, like, a certain kind of candy? Mm-hmm. And like the end is like, like the candy king and his candy palace. Yeah. What would that be in 40k version? Mm. I think each separate like 
candy area would just be one of the chaos gods mm. wouldn't it like this is this is the zinch little realm of tricks and puddle, Mir- puzzles <laughs> mirrors and stuff yeah, yeah. tell me puzzles <laughs> <laughs> in the end is like like Terra, like where the god emperor is or something like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. I like that too. Man, okay. we should make that game too. Write that down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no, I was being serious though. There's a 4K version of, what's that, Munchkin? Oh, yes, there is. There's a 4K version of Risk? Oh. Is there? There should mm-hmm. be if there isn't. That's a that's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, that seems like that would be a great connector. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, anyways, that's... I don't know what we're talking about. We're not. For a moment here, I just want to express express my <laughs> thankfulness just because you know we haven't said this in a while but it still is true this is really enjoyable to do it is just to talk about miniatures and miniature painting and and the community around it and what's going on in it and like our thoughts about various topics is is a lot of fun um i don't know and all, all of our like there's a decent number of people listen to this too and like everyone is always super jazzed about it's their favorite every other Monday, like, <laughs> right? That comment's reoccurring, and it's just really nice to see. It makes me happy, um, and I'm sure it makes you happy as well. I mean, don't assume. Okay. But <laughs> well, well, okay. yeah. uh, I will say that these are creating these continues to be a ton of fun. Yeah, and I think if that if that holds true, I think everything else kind of falls into place. Mm-hmm. If we're having fun doing this, I think that comes across, and then the rest of itself will sort itself out. Are you the kind of person that pronounces across with a T in it? Across? Did I? Maybe I did. I don't know. I think you did. Jeez, I never knew I was that guy. I'm sorry to like cut into your, like your heartwarming statements. That is just how you work. <laughs> I try to say nice things. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you ridicule me in the way I talk. Maybe, yeah, I deserve all the ridicule from, from the, the top viewers about how I don't understand any references. Right. Yeah, it's only fair. It's it, deserved. It's the universe putting you back into your place. <laughs> <laughs> I can take that. I can take that. <laughs> all right. Other stories. You were on a podcast recently. Yes. I was on a podcast uh, called Life After the Cover Save. Mm-hmm. Why are we both in the same weird pose? Right I don't now? know. I saw you doing it, and I was like, I want to try that out. <laughs> uh, Life After the Cover Save is a 40k podcast okay and blake and ed who are the two co-hosts uh have been doing that podcast for 10 years i found out wow 10 years dude we have some catching up to do yeah i don't yeah as long as they continue i don't think we can actually catch true up yeah until they die right and then we'll or, surpass them or someone kills them oh <laughs> you see that you see that blake and ed we're gonna see you at adepticon <laughs> Because they're coming. They're, oh, really? Yeah, they're coming. So we're going to meet them. Awesome. Um, and so the greatest thing about... I, I, I was aware of this podcast before they reached yeah, out. Yeah, I've heard of it. it. heard of it. And I listen to them um, because they're funny. Mm. And they do a lot of stuff that we do where they just talk about random stuff that has nothing to do with 40K. Heck yeah. And so I'm like... We we did an, you know over an hour of podcasts, and I don't think we even said the words Warhammer or 40K. In, over an hour? In over an hour. So we were talking about everything but <laughs> everything. Wait, but. so then did you go for like an additional hour after that talking about 40? No, no, no. <laughs> we just never talked about it. <laughs> what, did you talk, what, was the, what was the episode about? You'll have to check it out. Give us a little teaser. What's it about? Um, there was some talk about Goobertown hobbies in there. No, because that's the connection point because they know the goobs. Okay. Um, and I think I've converted them to just refer to him as goobs. As his name? Yeah. I, that's my goal in life. Is Crocky that, McGoob. Cro- Cro- Crocky McGoober Gooberson. <laughs> um, and so we talked about goobs. We talked about you. Okay. Uh, they made, a, they made a, uh, a funny little joke that they inferred that I was Miniac. And then later on, they find out that I'm not actually Miniac. Why, <laughs> why am I on the show? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Can I, something briefly. Uh, I intro my all my videos saying, hi, I'm Scott the Miniature Maniac. I do that very intentionally because I am not the only Miniac, obviously. We all are. Everyone's a Miniac. If you want to be. If you want to be, yeah. And I, I uh, do a really bad job explaining that. So people call me Miniac, and I want people to call me Scott. Um but now I'm explaining it. There you go. <laughs> Just so now everyone that's listening so or watching knows. you are Maniac. Oh, this is like a Tyler As, Durden thing, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm just having a conversation with myself right now. Just right. Switching, <laughs> switching chairs. And everyone is indulging my <laughs> insanity in the comment section. <laughs> if you only listen to this podcast, you never realize that it's just one person. <laughs> just making different voices. 
<laughs> I love that. I like where this is going. So that was a fun time. All right. So Project Mayhem. Let's oh let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is I, that is the whole purpose of all of us being maniacs is Project Mayhem. Okay. Yeah. That was supposed to come out later, but yeah, sure. Oh. John's ruining the surprise now. But yeah. that podcast was fun to record, I presume. It was. It was cool, and I actually got to record it like down here in my new space mm. and use a nice mic and all that kind of stuff. So I awesome. felt cool like, <laughs> I'm a nerdy guy. Con- content creation. Yeah. <laughs> Master class. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I like to say that. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, a, it's just a word that has a certain implication. Yes. Yes. And it has no reference to what we're talking about right now. I don't know. Um, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. So you can certainly give those dudes some love and check them out. Our knees just touched. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, oh, is that the leg of the chair? No, that's your leg. <laughs> no, that's a human leg. Um, I think we should show our feet right now. Why? Because I think oh, it's funny. Oh, okay. Sure. All right. Let's see this. Look at these. Look at like, we're actually both wearing blue jeans too. Yeah. You got black socks on. Oh, okay. Weird. I was wearing gray socks, wool socks earlier, but I took them off because I'm a diva. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I can't wear black slip on shoes and wear gray socks and have you see the gray socks like in the, you know, in between my black shoes and my gray mm-hmm. pants. I was like, H-, you know, that, no, I don't know. <laughs> Please explain. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I okay. like that thought process. Okay. I have black van slip on shoes. I bring them to places where I, I know I'm going to take the shoes on enough frequently. Like yeah. we're probably going to get lunch later yeah. and I don't want to take 20 minutes to tie my high top shoes that I normally wear. Um, and the problem with the low cut shoes is you can see the socks from underneath, right? Mm. So if I'm wearing white socks, I look like an old Asian man, ah. uh, you know, doing his gardening. So right. I switched to black socks. I wouldn't look like an old Asian man. All right. That was, that was an unnecessarily long description. But John wanted us to show our moccasins in case you're just listening to the audio version because they're both wearing moccasins. Yeah. Because when I go somewhere, I bring moccasins. He's got moccasins. I mean, this is Minnesota. Everyone's got moccasins. Yeah. Yeah. You, you wear them in the winter around your house because yeah. it gets a little nippy for the yes. toesies. Yes. Although it's kind of it's kind of warm in here. It is. It is warmer in here. Um, what's funny is it was really cold down here and it was really cold in the rest of my house. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And then my nest told me, like, your house is not heating properly. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong? I have a brand new furnace. I bought my furnace last year. And oh, it a buttload of high money. High fives. It's a new yeah. furnace. I yeah. just got one like a month ago. Oh, isn't it feel great? It feel great to spend like five grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those good bad things. Right. right? Yeah, I feel a necessary purchase, but, uh, and then I'm like, oh crap! You want to know why? I think the problem is mm. that wasn't the right sentence. But um, <laughs> <laughs> you want to know why? I think the problem is. <laughs> Uh, you went along. You're like, huh? Yeah, I was like, whatever. <laughs> I read between the lines. Because uh, I had done all this construction down here, and my furnace is down here. You struck a line. I did not strike a line. This is bleeding gas into a wall somewhere. Yeah, it's right. We're all just sniffing it in right now. Yeah. Um, my furnace filter was just completely caked in sheetrock dust. Oh. So the, oh, cuz I was like sucking it in. Yes. Oh. So I replaced that and now it is warm and toasty in my whole house. Dang, dude. Yeah. Who would well, have thought of that? that problem like, solving. And, yeah. You know, heating systems have a few Achilles heels as mm-hmm. being one. The other being the thermostat. Mm-hmm. That thing that battery fails, you're you no more heat. <laughs> yeah, it assumes that you're always good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to turn on. Yeah. Should we talk about actual things related no. to this podcast? Let's talk about this chair and how I can't roll it, forward. Yeah, because I got thick carpet down here. Dude, it's nice. It is It is super cushy and nice, but the wheelie chairs do not cooperate. Earlier, I was just walking around on my knees just because I could. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the expensive padding. Like It's like um, the super thick padding. I was only like, it's directly on concrete down here. I want to make sure. Sure. It's nice and warm. Okay, sorry. No more segues. We're gonna talk about painting. What have you painted lately? Oh, what have I painted? Uh, oh, in a recent podcast, I talked about that I had a uh, little goblin three mm-hmm. D printed. Yeah. Oh yeah, by a buddy, and yeah. so I painted that. That was a three D print. As a three D print. Nice. Yeah, his it looks resin is his egg Elgu Mars. Yeah, printer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's so so tiny. Yeah. Because we saw it in comparison to your thumbnail, right? I got so many comments about my like gross thumbnails. 
Because I, I chew my fingernails. I'm sorry. That's such an internet thing to do is to hone in on the one thing that's not what the subject of the photo is. Yeah. So. Yeah. So fine. I'm never going to post pictures of my minis ever again. But it was tiny. Okay. Like feet to head. It's like no more than 20 millimeter tall. Yeah. It, I I should probably post a picture of it next to a Primaris because he like comes up to the knee of a Primaris. Seriously? Yeah. Wow. Um, he's on a 25 mil base and the 25 mil base looks like a giant <laughs> dinner plate <laughs> and he's just one tendy. <laughs> At first I was like, you're, you're saying the number one ten, the letter D. <clears throat> I was like, is that like a, um, like a measurement thing? But then I realized it was a chicken tender. Yeah. Yeah. I should have yeah. got that. Um, somebody said that us to stop calling them tendies cause it's cringy. No. And this makes me want to say it more. Oh yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So I painted that goblin actually when I was on a work trip to Arizona. Mm -hmm. I painted him over two nights there in the hotel. And I made a major mistake of not bringing good brushes. Okay. Um, I didn't bring any brush that had a tiny tip, which was probably the dumbest idea. But uh, it still worked out okay. Yeah. And I I reinvigorated my hatred of the Red Grass Games wet palette. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I was so mad at that thing. I'm like, look, I'm traveling. Got the little, the rubber band elastic thing around it. Keep everything in there nice and tight and cozy. Like, God damn it. That thing sucks. The paper, it, it's got to just come down to the paper that they are. The proprietary uh, yeah. paper is yeah. just doesn't allow any moisture through. Yeah. The, well, I mean, I don't know. For me, it like, it, it, uh, it sucked paint up. Yes. Um, so it was like all of my paint was just bleeding into the paper. Um, so that was really annoying, but I've, I've never really talked about why I dislike that thing so much. Should we, should we go into that? I think we, we might as well. At this point, they're not going to become a sponsor, so <laughs> we might as well just burn the bridge entirely. So uh, let me just say that it totally works. If you if yeah. you have one and you just put like normal Reynolds baking paper on it, it's yeah. fine. It works just fine. Um, but why don't you go first because this is your story. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of issues that I have with it. First of all, it closes too tight. We're probably going to have the same topics that we're going to discuss about maybe. it, but maybe you just drink your delicious diet code red Mountain Dew. Diet code red. Yeah. Which is I mean, John's domain. Drink a John's drink. That's right. You don't diet come to my house and not get a diet code red. Hell that's yeah. A, yeah. So uh, <laughs> any of you sprues and spruettes stop on over and uh, you get, you get a free diet Dew with purchase. I don't know what you're actually buying, but <laughs> uh, yeah. So, it closes so stinking tight that it creates this like hum- like a humidor where everything, all the moisture in there finds its way into your paint so much quicker. <clears throat> and so you're, I mean, you close that thing for an hour, your paint is just, everything's a glaze now. It's so diluted. Yeah. So there's my first one. Okay. What's your first one? Um, I think everything that I'm going to say can be summed up with one thought and that's that someone who isn't a painter thought of a bunch of cool features and was like, let's do it. And then they've just made it a thing. So one of the things is that, that rubber gasket around the lid. Yeah. Um, so, okay. It closes tightly. Um, part of that thing that's annoying with the rubber gasket is that, uh, it doesn't have a nice snap to the lid. Right. Um, like the Masterson one does. So it's like, I don't really know when it's ever fully closed. Yeah. Okay. That's my second one. Oh God, I have like, I have like fifteen. Okay. Oh man, all but right. it's all kind of just like pedantic, like little things where it's like you could fix this really easily. Yeah, I think honestly, if you just use regular parchment paper with it, use its foam. Um, don't have it closed all the way, have mm-hmm. it slightly open. Mm-hmm. Um, it probably works just fine. Mm-hmm. I don't have any, you know, but I I don't want to have to use baking paper. I got like 150 of their sheets. Yeah. And they're all nice and pre-cut. I know. That's so nice. I'm like, I just want them to work. Yeah. Um, It's not the end of the world. Was I able to paint a miniature with it? Yeah. Absolutely. 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 It's not, I mean, it doesn't make me a worse painter. Sure. It, it gives me less control over what I, how I want the paint to act because of the way the, that paper works though. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably enough. It's if you have one, great. I I use it time and again. You use yours. Peep. No. <laughs> that is false. Uh, <clears throat> I have it in a drawer somewhere. <laughs> but people use them and they like them. And that's the more power to you. Um, I have, I try, okay. The other things I don't like about it, 
if you have that rubber band thing around the outside and there's actual water in your wet palate and you put it in your backpack, that rubber band is not strong enough to keep the lid sealed and it will leak everywhere, which is stupid because it's advertised that it's like a, you know, that's why that thing's there. So right. that it, no water gets out. First of all, who wants that? Right. Second of all, who travels with water in their palate? Right. Or paint. Have you ever, has anyone ever done that? It's just, just water and paint just gets everywhere and it yeah. turns into like a tie dye sponge. Yeah. So I don't understand the rubber gasket on any level. It's not mm. useful at all. It right. makes the lid not close nicely. It doesn't even work. When you do shove it down hard, it turns your thing into a, like a, a humidor, like you said. And who the hell travels with water or paint mm. in their palate anyways? Just, okay. That's just the lid. Okay. I don't like that. Second thing, it's so thin. Yeah. Okay, so do you have the orange lid or the blue lid one? Orange lid. I have the smaller one. Okay, so they sent me the blue lid one. Maybe it's not as much a problem with the orange lid one, but the blue lid one is so small and it's so large, the surface area, that water evaporates noticeably faster than the master sim, which has a deeper reservoir for water because you can put more water in it, mm -hmm. obviously. So I'm having to fill up my sponge to the level that I like once every 30 to 35 minutes because it's evaporating so fast. So make it a little bit deeper. That'd be nice. Um, two, the magnets that come in the wavy palette, which I freaking love. Yeah, the wavy I love thing that thing. Because cool. you can put your, it has, it, it's scooped for a brush. Mm -hmm. This is such a great idea. Yeah. Fantastic idea. The magnets aren't glued in. They fall out. Yeah. It's like, come on. Like, how hard would it have been to put a little dab of whatever, epoxy super glue in there so they, they don't fall out? Um, and then lastly, the lid is like made out of like rubbery stuff. And I don't know. It just seems really flimsy. Yeah, I like that it technically can be used as a second palette. Sure, it is, but it's even thinner than the already thin, in terms of depth, regular palette. Sure. So yeah. I got a bit of a issue with that too. So that's all the things I don't like about that palette. Yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't make a, a habit of reviewing things because we just hate everything. Yeah, <laughs> I don't hate the Masterson. That does exactly what I wanted to do. Do you think there's a part of that is because that was the first one you used? Possibly. I, I, that's why I keep telling myself that's possible. or trying to convince myself that maybe I'm just this way with the Masterson because that's what I learned with. Possibly. But like when I came to brushes, I started with GW ones and then I moved to Sable and I was like, these are obviously better. True. True. Um, I don't know. I think there is probably some element of truth to that, that I'm trying to defend the thing that I like and that I learned on. Yeah. But if it works for you and you like it, that's what this comes down to. Yeah. If, if, if anything works for you and it doesn't seem like it's slowing you down, don't listen to us. Right. Or don't listen to me because I'm the one that's raging right now. <laughs> you <laughs> you're like, are. you're like uh, the lid is kind of bad. And I'm like, this sucks and this sucks and this sucks. But yeah. oh well. Yeah. I you, think the one thing that also makes me salty is that they sent out a bunch to different miniature painters and no one said anything of what I just said. It's mm -mm. just like, what do you, what, you guys use it? I used mine for like a month or two months. And it was like, I don't know, maybe everyone's not as much of, little biatch that I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're actually nice people. So. Yeah, they're, they're all nice. I, I guess I, one thing we could do to... God, my chair is wheelie. <laughs> I want to get a little closer. We're like air humping the yeah. table. <laughs> get closer. Get closer. Um, watch people's like Instagram or their YouTube videos or that kind of stuff and mm -hmm. see if they still use it. Yeah. I think that, Angel, that's a... Angel Geraldez does. I okay. think he still uses it. I'm, I'm sure there's a fair number that still use it. But I don't, I don't. Does Shoshi still use hers? She I reviewed it. I don't remember. Okay. I would have to check her, check out her stream. That'd be a good, yeah. Check that out. I think, I think she does. I think she does. Okay. Um, but a lot of folks don't. I don't think Sam does. I don't think Vincey V does. I'm just, I don't have no hard in facts on this. So <laughs> they probably all still do. And just I'm just guessing. Making, <laughs> just making it up. It's a good idea to check if people still use it. That's that's what would indicate if they do like it or if they thought something else was better. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So that's a long, drawn out version of a discussion regarding what I painted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I painted was what did I have written down there? You wrote the Chronicler. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I have this. Uh, this this is gonna seem like a plug, but it's not a plug. I have a tier for my personal Patreon, which is called the Sepulchral Guard, and we paint stuff together. And what we're painting together right now is this model from a scale of 75 called the Chronicler, which is like a sci-fi-y, nomad-looking kind of dude with like, you know, he's got like a 
he's got like a hood on and he has a bunch of like sci-fi gear and a techno staff and What's uh a, what what constitutes a techno staff it's a staff it plays techno music with technology on it <laughs> Techno staff. It looks like it could have a speaker on it. That would, be, yeah, that would be sweet. <laughs> the system is down. <laughs> um, so I'm painting that uh, in increments. Every single month we paint a portion of it. This last month we painted the staff. And previous months we painted uh, like the feet and the legs and other parts. So we're painting it in stages together and then we're comparing notes. And uh, one thing that I'm doing with it is I'm experimenting a lot and what I am experimenting with uh, is the color green. Um, so I'm painting a lot of it using different green tones in different spots, seeing how it can be incorporated and, and whatnot. Um, but I'm having fun because it's not a model that I particularly care about. Like if I was just by myself, I wouldn't have bought that model to purchase. But since we voted on it, people like it, I'm, I'm going to paint it. But because it's not like something I'm in love with, I can, I can experiment. And I don't really get to experiment with large scale typically because I don't paint it very often. Um, so it's, it's good. I like it. Cool. I, I totally relate to what you're saying in regards to a mini that you're not super in love with mm -hmm. and just allowing yourself to do something fun. Yeah. I think that's cool. I think, you know, that's maybe a lesson that all of us can learn. It's like, well, we're really, really excited about this army or this style of mini or whatever. Maybe buy something else that's a quality sculpt, think it's cool, but you're not in love with, and then just have some fun with it. Only paint green, apparently. That's what we're going to do. Yeah, just do that all the time. All or green. just paint army men, because they're <laughs> cheap, and you don't care about those. Yeah, green army men. I'm being sarcastic right now. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't paint green army men. <laughs> well, we were at the uh, we were at the, the paint and tank. Yeah. Um, so we went to a store. Was it last weekend? Yeah, I think so. Last weekend, we mm -hmm. went to a store, a local store, The Source mm -hmm. Hobby and Games. Yeah. Roseville, Minnesota. Go check it out. It's an awesome store. Amazing store. Um, and they had a Kingdom Death paint and take. And we showed up. We painted. And we mm -hmm. took. Yep. And I heard, like, you were going around talking to people because you were being social, which I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I heard, like, from off in the distance, Scott's voice say, are you painting an army man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone brought a goddamn green army man. I was like, get out of here. These models are free. <laughs> like, right. You get a free model from like a $400 board game. Yeah. It's already assembled and primed too. You have no excuses. The paint's there too. It's free. Just paint the damn model. <laughs> Did he like seriously bring a green army? Yeah. Man to paint? Oh, it wasn't like a joke. No. A, a meme off of you raging about it in the last episode. No. <laughs> it was ridiculous. That's even funnier. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, whatever. If you want to do that, you can. Is our recommendation that you don't do that. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty of cheap, cool models out there. Or that, free ones. Free ones that yeah. are already assembled and primed <laughs> at the place where you are. <laughs> in this case. <laughs> But yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um, someone showed up. His name is Ryan, and he brought me a custom sculpted Michael Morbius. That's like ninety millimeter scale, so it's a big boy. Yeah, but that was super special because you can't buy that model anywhere because whoever has the license for Marvel Games, I think it's Atomic Mass sure. Games. They haven't made a, a Morbius yet, and even if they did, it wouldn't be a giant display model, right? One. So that was super cool. Um, and you know, it's, it's, I felt really just like, I don't know what I, I want to say, like loved or something like that, but someone showed up, they brought a gift for me and it was really cool that they knew what I like and they watched my videos and that felt nice. Yeah. And it's a bad ass looking Yeah, model. dude. He paid some sculptor to sculpt it. Then he 3d printed it. It was just, it was super cool. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So this is where we learn about entitled celebrities and how they get free stuff. <laughs> And they... Did we, you just call me a celebrity? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I was going to say. Oh, KDM, they wrote a newsletter about our Hangout. What? Yeah. So they have a newsletter they send out, I think, in, to emails. Uh, you can subscribe to it. And they talked about the stores, talked about uh, us being there. And, and it was cool because I don't know if KDM does a whole lot of outreach with like content creators. So it was cool to be at the forefront of that. In fact, they don't do a lot of outreach with local stores. I don't think stores sell KDM stuff, right? Yeah. The source, I believe, is the first and might be only uh, in-store 
seller. Yeah, of KDM that's stuff. crazy. Yeah, I think it's just because the one of the managers there um, was just happened to like be next to them at like a convention, and he, you know, had a conversation, talked about the, you know the, the possibility of doing that, and then they're like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So he said awesome. it took a while. It was like a year long process to get everything kind of hammered out and figure out the details and yeah. all that stuff. And yeah. Dan. Dan the man. Dan the man. Yeah. Yeah. Dan is the guy that put together all those KDM fiddly models oh, and primed yeah. them for all of us too. Yeah. And he had his own paints out there for people to take and yeah, use. Gosh. He's what? such a good person. Yeah. What a heart. That yeah. man. Uh, I don't know why he's friends with us. <laughs> Us scumbags. Yeah. <laughs> like getting free models and <laughs> yeah, give me the more. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it sounds like? Good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what you sounded like when you when he showed you the model he was giving you. Oh yeah. You like to... you like pushed his forehead away and yeah. said, Give me the more yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just turned into a goblin. <laughs> right. He's mine. Uh so yeah, you're probably gonna have to paint that. Yeah. That's pretty freaking cool. It is cool. Or I'll steal it, and then you'll. I'll just tell you that you lost it somewhere. No. Do you like Morbius? Yeah, dude. We had this conversation. No, we my don't. favorite. I know you like vampires. Okay. Yeah. My my favorite comic book series of Marvel as a kid was the Night Stalkers. Oh, right. I remember this conversation. Yeah. Yes. So Morbius, uh, Night Stalkers go hand in hand. Yeah, Morbius okay. is one of the Night Stalkers. Is he? Yes, he is. Okay. Yep. There was him. There's uh, Blade, uh, Wesley Snipes, Blade. and then the white guy. <laughs> Remember the that guy? Name. Okay, yeah. It's like basically, it was like all the monstery dudes or the kind of perceivably evil dudes were together in a crew. Right, because it was two actual vampires, mm -hmm. Blade and Morbius. And I think the third guy was a vampire hunter, which is ironic. <sighs> oh, man, what's that dude's name? I can't remember it. I have to go find I have all the comics still, so... Okay, we'll, look at, we'll, we'll check we'll it out later. This. Um, so yeah, that's what you what you painted. Mm -hmm. wait, wait, the oh, chronicler, the chronicler. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah that was, <laughs> right. I like how we start with two sentences about what we painted, and then it's the next forty minutes, and yeah. nothing to do with what we painted. <laughs> <laughs> so we're still in the what we painted segment. Yeah. All right. I know the topic. <sighs> we got a heavy one. Is it? Yeah, it's pretty heavy. Not the heaviest one, and looking at our potential topics for today. Yeah, there is one that is quite heavy. That yeah, we'll we'll tackle one day. I'm scared to tackle that one. I know I am too. <laughs> I am too. But that's as much as we're gonna tease it. <laughs> um, so the the serious topic, which you probably already saw the title of this episode, wherever you're listening or watching it, is the question: Do you have to be artistic to be a good mini painter? And the, this question is steeped in so much unmeasurable stuff. Yes. So I don't know if it's worth it to get pedantic. Maybe. Okay. Well, let's try it on. Let's try it on for size. All right. Put on that shoe. See if it fits. How do you measure good? Oh, um, I don't know. How do you measure artistic? I think that's kind of like a self assessment. Sure. I think both those things are self assessments. Yes. Yeah. I think you're right. So it's like when someone's like, when someone thinks good, they look at your stuff and and they're like, that is good. Mm -hmm. And for all intents and purposes, it is good. You know, it's good. Um, but then you look at someone like Mikhail Pasarsky and you're, then you think that's good. I think that's good. And so it's just like, it's a, it's a hard thing to really kind of nail down, but maybe we can, Maybe we don't need to worry about like all the details and just kind of answer what I think is like the heart of the question. Yeah. Which is like, do I need to understand color theory and all of these other things that you might learn as a, as an art student in order to be good at painting miniatures? Right. Yeah. I, the way that I kind of thought it in my head and, and maybe it's good for us to like get this thought process out for frame of reference mm -hmm. is would you classify yourself as an artistic person that, that is, good however you define it in some other form of art outside of this hobby so, oh, okay that's yeah i like that too an artist that that draws that paints on two-dimensional things mm -hmm. that creates music mm -hmm. that um creates wonderful cuisine mm. that oh uh, you know what i mean oh, yeah. subway sandwiches <laughs> sandwich artist <laughs> yeah. oh man i i was like ooh, that make me hungry for a sandwich right now <laughs> Not a Subway sandwich, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's better options. Um, yeah, well, other forms of, well, I mean, uh, uh, 
what about like acting? What about like sure. that's art? Right. All those kinds of things. Like it, it doesn't necessarily have to be visual art. It doesn't have to be something that is you need your hands to create. Okay. Are we qualified to answer this question? I don't think we are qualified to answer any topic that we discuss on this <laughs> podcast, but we do anyway. Because <laughs> I'm thinking you have an artistic background. You used to be really good and probably still are, or used to do it a lot, 2D illustration of characters. Yeah. You did some character drawing when you were younger. And also you went to school for being an architect, which is uh, an artistic like pursuit. Mm-hmm. Um, I grew up in a family that was artistic and I was surrounded by that a lot. And I drew stuff too when I was little, but I wasn't like anywhere near as good as my sisters. Um, I didn't go to art school or anything like that, but you know, I have a, a little bit of a, a background in that too, because of my family. Um, so, you know, it's hard to, I don't know, are we, I was just saying, are we like licensed uh, podcasters to answer this question, especially you, cause you ha- are sure. artistic. I think that, I think that we can look, at it from our own experience of how we define ourselves, and did that is there anything that from that background or that title or label that assisted us in getting better at this to where we got good or we will one day become good sure um and so we can we can define that because we have some personal experience from it Sure. And we can also separate between if there is any separation between the skills that I've built in mini painting, what is, has nothing to do with the artistic side. So Mm. I think we can, um, we can kind of walk through that process is what I guess I'm trying to get to. Sure. Yeah. I have another thing too, is that I, I know of people who aren't, wouldn't define their background as artistic who have gone on to win Slayer Swords. Um, Mm-hmm. Particularly the one I'm thinking of right now is the one who painted Magma Tracks. His name is Vince. He won the Canada 2004 Slayer Sword, and he's an engineer. And he just won because he had the persistence of freaking iron. Um, mm-hmm. And he just kept repainting his thing over and over and over and over and over again until he was satisfied. Um, to answer this question shortly, no, you don't need to be artistic to be good at miniature painting. I think. Okay, I'm, I think I'm kind of hijacking what you were going to talk about. Yeah, that's what you do. Okay. Nah, I don't. Nah, I don't. I don't know what I was going to talk about there. So you okay. go. You go with it. It okay. sounds good. So what I'm going to say, and what I was thinking about on the drive up here, because you told me about this topic. Was, down here, down here. I'm down south. here, down here. You're south. Ah. Um, I think in the pursuit of becoming a good miniature painter, you become artistic. Yeah. So. Whether you have a background in it or like you're not inclined toward it, uh, once you you know start to improve and become better, you start to become more artistic. So maybe the answer to the question is yes. The two are. What's the phrase people always use? Intermingled, interconnected, there. interconnected. You can't have one without the other. They are symbiotic. They are not mutually exclusive. They are mutually inclusive. Oh wow, that's, that's deep. Yeah. So. Because, yeah, maybe I can make that claim. In the pursuit of becoming a better major painter, become a better artist. Mm. There's no way around that. Mm. Argue with me. Uh, okay. I will argue with you. <laughs> um, what does it mean to be artistic? I think it's not... I think what we often think of is, well, you, you're good at drawing, or you're good at painting, mm-hmm. yeah. or you're good at playing the guitar, whatever. Mm-hmm. That means that you, when, when people say that, typically what they mean is that you're technically able to accomplish that task well. Yeah. If I go play Ride the Lightning on my guitar right now, mm. does that make me artistic? I didn't write the music. I'm just following the notes. Mm-hmm. I'm just copying. <laughs> I'm a tracer. Okay. Um, but they define that as an artistic pursuit. Because I'm playing the music. Just like... Because a cover artist is an artist. Oh, boy. E, that's a tough one. Right. Um, what is art? <laughs> what, is, what is life? <laughs> oh, you know, this is a great question. But go on. You were going good. You're saying great things. Yeah. So I think when people look at something as a work of art, and mini painting included, they need to separate 
the technical aspect to create that from what you typically define as artistic. You becoming better as a miniature painter is often 90% more comfortable and more um, practiced in the technical aspect. Yeah. And that in and of itself, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be defined as the artistic side. Sure, yeah. Um, and so uh, probably one of my main points of this whole thing is, is people will say I'm not artistic as a wall they put up in front of themselves for why their painting is not as good as they think it could be or is not as good as others. Mm. Cause I'm not artistic. And so, uh, you know, I don't know, I have no background in painting or drawing or whatever. And that I can set up as a wall in front of myself for me not being good. Mm. When in fact, we've all been there where we haven't had any experience with this medium. Mm -hmm. And so instead of putting up that wall, you could say, well, if I'm just going to put in hours, because like anything, I mean, the magic secret for this hobby in miniature painting all comes down to hours. Yeah. You could say that's true of every, every artistic pursuit. Right. Um, dang. Um, what was I going to say? I, I don't know. What you're it doesn't matter. Say. That was good enough. No, <laughs> this question comes from one of our patrons, mm -hmm. right? Um, we don't know which one, but it's one of you. Which that's you know, in case you were curious, being a patron of Top allows you to suggest topics for us to to discuss during the podcast. So this is that right now. But just the fact that the question exists almost almost implies that what you're suggesting that people put it up as a mental barrier and they definitely do is a real thing because otherwise you wouldn't ask the question right right because it's like people are concerned like i can't i can't be good or i'll never be good but what you were saying is that if you practice the techniques um from people that get results that you like and and you know how to replicate those on your own miniatures that's probably good enough for like 95 percent of people right and the other 5% are probably going to become artists in their journey on how to paint better miniatures for themselves. Um, like for instance, okay, if you want to paint like heavy metal, it's not really a secret about how they paint. It just takes a lot of practice because they have incredibly skilled hands and they're incredibly intentional about how they paint. Um, it just takes practice, but what, you know, what they do, you can see it in the box art and you can replicate it for yourself. And for like a lot of people, that's going to be like the, like, you know, an amazing way to paint. And it is. So yeah. Mm. Answer and that, the question. I think that's the artistic side is the, 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 the true artistic side of this. When people say, are you artistic in mini painting is the design choices and the aesthetic choices. So that painting style, the heavy metal style is the artistic expression of their choice of how they choose to paint the figures. Mm -hmm. It's not the technical application of the steps. Mm -hmm. It's the choice of this whole finished product as a whole looks a certain way. And you know that style, whether it's a squig or it's a Primaris Marine. Mm -hmm. And so the aesthetic overlaps and that is in itself the artistic design philosophy for the work that they do. If you're just copying those steps to make it look that way, that's, you don't have to be an artist to do that. You just have to understand the steps, know how to technically achieve them and have the hours in to be able to pull it off. I want to deep dive on this question a little bit more. I don't think the question implies, do I have to be an artist to be good at miniature painting? I think there's a difference between being an artist and being artistic. Mm. So like there was this video that I don't think exists anymore on the internet. It was like, is miniature painting art? And the conclusion that the presenter made was that it is not largely because uh, an intention of art is to evoke an emotion in the viewer. That's that was one of like maybe four things she mentioned in the video. And she kind of went through and said, the majority of works that you see in miniature painting aren't trying to evoke a certain emotion um, in the viewer. They're there for, you know, a purpose. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm saying this because the question is, do I have to be artistic? And I think, I think you were right in your original assessment. It's just that like, <clears throat> are you good at other fields of art? Are you, 
are you technically able? Um, and there's a difference between being technically able and being mm, being an artist. Ooh, ooh. You know? I think the motion you're making right now with yeah, your shoulders and neck. I, I'm like, I'm sussing out my artistic soul. No, yeah. that's an interesting question. I've never thought of myself as an artist because I can't do other forms of art. I can't paint on a canvas. I can't draw on a sketch pad and make something good. Um, I can't, like my, my sisters are f- fantastic at that. It's like, they're like traditional artists. I'm just kind of like futzing around with my toys over here, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> so I've never thought of myself as an artist. Um, do you think of yourself as an artist? Ooh. I don't know. Yeah, I think so. But I think that that's separate from mini painting. I think I probably have always huh. thought of myself as an artist before I, I ever painted a mini. Okay. So I don't, I don't make the connection to the mini painting there. I think, um, oh man, here's, here's a really like contrived statement. I think if you're an artist, there's different paths you can go to be your release of the art that you want to create. Okay. But those don't, each individual one doesn't define you as an artist or not as an artist. Either you are or you aren't. Okay. So it's Whichever like, path you take to make your art is just, just that. Yeah. That's your profession, your chosen thing, whatever. Yeah. So each person deep down either is or is not an artist. Mm-hmm. And it's just simply because they have chosen to maybe just create in the first place. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I think that no one defines that for you, that it's you, you have to take that mantle up yourself. And I think there's a, there's some form of confidence in yourself Mm -hmm. that goes along with that. Mm. So if you, if, if each of us, all the sprues and spruettes were to look in the mirror and say, I'm an artist that carries a weight because now you have told yourself, I am an artist. And now that means that I am going to put forth the effort of an artist in my work in mini painting. Mm. So I would, I would challenge folks to do that. Dr. Say, John yeah. prescribing some medicine right now. <laughs> MD. <laughs> um, mini doctor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. So I would challenge folks if it, this, just saying it will not make you a better mini painter, but what it implies, the weight that you are putting on yourself, the responsibility that, if I am an artist, then that means that I take this seriously. That means that I make this a priority and that I strive to improve. Mm-hmm. I think that all goes along with stating, why do I keep doing these weird things with my arms? No, it just feels natural. It just feels so chicken wingy yeah. hanging out here. Yeah. Um, I don't chicken know what I was singing. Wing. I'm hungry for chicken wings now. Back on chickens. Woo, no, chickens. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. It's like you make a promise to yourself. You label yourself as something. People are going to... It's very natural for you to want to not lie to people i would say and so when you say you're to yourself in the mirror it's like i'm an artist it's like oh people are gonna look at me and assess me on whether or not i am an artist so i better you know figure out how to do that real quick like i'm not gonna say i'm a weightlifter because look at me um <laughs> but if you say that then suddenly you have this responsibility to yourself right. it's like well i better do something about that if right. i'm telling people that exactly people want to resolve that kind of conflict in their own head yep um that that's kind of an interesting thought experiment. Um, but then, okay. I just want to, you know, give a call out to my boys out there and my girls who don't care to be an artist. Right. And they're just painting so they can have a painted army for their game. I'm sure there are people that are more than okay with not labeling themselves as an artist and just following paint schemes from, you know, on the back of boxes that they buy or stuff like that, just Mm -hmm. to have painted stuff. And, and that's cool. And that's okay too. We're not trying to say that. Um, in order to be good at painting, you need to be an artist. In fact, that's the freaking question that's being asked. Right. Um, you don't need to be uh, technically good. Uh, you don't need to be an artist to be technically good at painting miniatures. Um, yeah, absolutely. Not. That's just that's just practicing rudiments. Right. Yeah. When we think about kind of the more traditional artistic sides of of painting that we apply and 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 light and color theory mm-hmm. um, and all that you know more technical things. I mean. People think of it as very artistic, and it's when you, when you don't look at it up close. Up close, it's very, 
technical education. Yeah, right? yeah I see what you're saying right now. Even right. like understanding color theory, maybe not is necessarily the true heart of what it is to be artistic. No. That's just more technical knowledge you're memorizing, right? right? Yeah. I, I think that if you understand the technical side, that frees you up to be more artistic because you're not consciously going through those steps and instead you're breaking free of that cage <laughs> and then your attendees can be free range chickens are are all the sprues and sprouts in cages right now yeah you gotta break free from your cage you project be, mayhem you need to be <laughs> you need to be free range sprues and sprouts <laughs> right all natural no no growth hormones grass fed <laughs> But if you're not bogged down in the decision making of the technical things, yeah. then your brain can be free to think about mood and story and desire and emotion. Desire. <laughs> <laughs> Project Mayhem desi <laughs> desires you to desire. Uh, and then that is where the true art happens. And you don't have to want to do that. You know, mm. just like you said, if I want a badass army on the table. I don't have to evoke my inner emotions of, of, of how the feeling of this individual tyranid, like what is his, you know, what is his motivation, right? Like you don't need to get to that point to have a beautiful looking tyranid. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, Warhammer has a wonderful Warhammer games workshop has a wonderful YouTube channel called Warhammer TV where they, you know, go over, you have very specific ways to paint your models, and I'm sure other companies have this a similar thing, and that is more than okay to watch and just copy it to have an awesome looking mini. Right. I mean, this. What well, I mean, that's what we do. I say we, but I'm really referring to you because you're the one that makes videos. And what are videos other than, for the most part, follow me, what I'm doing. This is how you do a thing. This is the copy. Copy I, this. I try to not do that in my videos there are there are certain ones that are definitely like copy me heavy metal marines are like I, I show you the paints i use and everything but for the most part i don't talk about the paints that i use i talk about you know what i'm doing and why i'm doing it and i, I hope that mm. makes people more self-sufficient and less uh i'm yeah. watching this video to get a paint scheme it's more about the thought process that mm -hmm. you go through to make the decision. It's not about the decision and here's the decision I made and you need to follow this decision. It's yeah. Here's how I got to the decision. Yeah. That's the important thing to learn. Maybe I can check myself real quick here. Maybe you can sound off in the comment section if that has come across in the videos or it just comes across as annoying <laughs> that I don't discuss the specific brand and, and, and colors that I use. It is intentional, but maybe it, it, I'm not accomplishing the goal that I want to accomplish. So sound off, rip me apart. I can take it. I can't really take it. Yeah. Yeah. You, as soon as that phrase left your lips, I'm like, no, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it. No, <laughs> I sit and cry. My no. wife all the time. Look what this person said to me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, you like you take screenshots of it all too. And like, well, I do that for the the one time a year video that I make. I know, but they're pretty funny when you put them all together and you put the funny music in the background. It's funny, mm, yeah, but yeah. not in the moment. It's not funny. No, no, no. <laughs> give it a year for it to kind of cool off, then it's funny. Oh, well. So, do you think you're an artist? I don't. Okay. So maybe you... I am when it comes to no. I was gonna say videos, but there's a lot. There's way more art required in the creation of a video than I think folks tend to realize. Yeah. You really have to give it some thought about, you know, what you're trying to convey, how you want the information to flow. And you're doing all these tweaks along the way to make sure what you're trying to say is getting across and stuff like mm -hmm. that. I'm not sure if that's artistic or if that's just like maybe educational or like educational minded. I, I think you, I think there's the, the vision, right? So mm -hmm. the way I look at it is here's your vision of, what you want the experience to be for yeah. your audience. Yeah. Oh, let's go and say that. And vision and experience are very artistic terms. <laughs> yeah. So the, the technical aspect of setting up the camera and exactly where the lighting goes, um, maybe in and of um, themselves are not artistic, but the, the way you light a scene, the direction that they see, what they see in the background, how much those are all purposeful. Mm, yeah. Well, some people, they aren't, they don't, they don't do that. Oh, no, yeah. That. But like you may, it's kind of like you're referencing like a Hollywood movie. Yeah. If that's the case, absolutely. How they light each scene is very intentional and has a purpose and very artistic and whatnot. But that's something I never thought about really as a, a, as a viewer or a consumer of YouTube videos until the first time I went to your house 
to be involved in shooting a video mm. and realized how much you put into each shot in each video and very purposeful in what you know what shots we're getting what you're saying how you're saying it where you're sitting all these things it was a lot more in depth than i thought well i appreciate you saying that thank you so i mean i don't know if it's a it's a compliment because i never would have known it when just watching the videos so well you're saying it out loud now yeah <laughs> <laughs> whoops um <laughs> but it's it's all purposeful and if you don't look at that your audience says has the experience you are driving them to have without realizing that they're having that, that directed experience. Mm -hmm. And that in and of itself is very artistic. Yeah. I remember the first time you came to do that paint set video, I made you like redo lines like four or five times. Yeah, you did. To see you. I mean, like you, you had the heart of what you wanted to say written down and then you were doing it like ad lib. You weren't reading off of a script or a prompter necessarily. And I was like, I want you to make sure what you're trying to say is being said and you're doing it succinctly inside. So it made you do things like yes, three or four did. times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is good, which was good. And what's funny too, is after we did that, a, a number of scenes, I started to realize shot number five or six was the best ones because I had to get through what am I missing? And you as a third party there to like absorb as the audience, mm -hmm. uh, knowing what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. what am I missing? Or is it easily translatable to me as an audience? And so, yeah, it was a lot of work. That was a, that was a long day. Yeah. It was a long time ago too. It was. Yeah. Gosh, that was, was that after Adepticon two years ago? Is that what it was? was? I can't remember if it was in the winter. Or, oh, it, it, there was snow outside. Yeah. Because we went outside to shoot part of the ad where you were dressed up like oh. James Bond and there oh, was snow right. outside, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. And Amber shot the, had to do the, the camera work yeah. for us there. Yeah. yeah. Three person crew. <laughs> <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Two actors. <laughs> in the middle of the street in your neighborhood. <laughs> with, with a gun. <laughs> with a gun. <laughs> Two guns. You had one too. Yeah. With that that could have gone so wrong. With the orange tip covered up. So it's, it looked like real gun. That's why I had Amber out there standing by the camera on a tripod. It's like, this is a, we're shooting this. We're not killing people. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so if a car drove down the street she could to the tripod. Yeah. Yeah. She could do that. It was really to save the camera. Yeah. Oh no. She was also monitoring audio because you had the wireless lav and it was like rubbing up against your jacket. So yeah. she was like making sure the take was good. Gosh. Ah, the memories. Ah. <laughs> the memories. Now you're doing your own thing and now I can't ask you to make videos for me anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, you still can. I'll just say no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to the topic. Do you need to be artistic to be a good miniature painter? A um, couple answers to this. If you're just seeking technical skill, no. Uh, if you're seeking something else, you'll become artistic in the journey. I think it's inevitable. I think the only real benefit you have of having an artistic background or considering yourself an artist and getting into mini painting mm. is it can speed up like the first stages or what I would call like, let's say you broke down, you know, stage one is the meme space Marine with the googly eyes. Right. <laughs> and stage 10 is, uh, you know, Ben comets and Michael Pisarski and Sergio or whatever. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. say that we'll, we'll make it a, a 10 step program. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What be having a background in, as an artist will do is that will help you in steps one, two, and three much quicker. Because you are simply taking some of that background knowledge and understanding of, of technical aspects here because you have some relatable experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it's just like me working as a car salesman for a couple of years. If I get a job as a, as a banker that does financing for people that buy cars, I'm going to certain parts of my job, I'm going to be better at quicker because I have that relatable experience. Can't argue with that. And so that's, that's all that it's helping you with. But you know what? We can all get through those steps one through three, whether or not we have the artistic background. Absolutely. It may require you to put a couple more hours than them in. It may require you to, you know, try again and again. You may have to be a little bit more committed to get to step four. But you can still do it. Mm. And so if you're putting up your own barriers, that's all you're doing. You're putting them up for yourself. So don't, don't put up walls that are unnecessarily gonna you know get you further away from your goal whatever your goal is in mini painting yeah that's a great statement um i, I thought something else i thought you were gonna go on a different way and i said uh, what i thought was being artistic um 
what it also does for you is it enables you to enjoy your hobby in a different way. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like all these considerations that you didn't have before about painting a particular model, you now have. It's like, I hate using this word, but it's like, now I consider the story of my model. I consider the mood and the atmosphere and all these artistic -y things. And it's like, it allows you to enjoy miniature painting in a way that is, is different. It's not just as a means to an end anymore, which is a game. You're now doing something totally different and, and, and unique. Um, so, I mean, if you're looking for a way to maybe reinvigorate your hobby, maybe kind of considering more of an artistic approach to it might be a way to do that if you haven't already done that. I like that. I think Banshee does, talks about that. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, his fuck smoothness kind of retro wave style thing that he does. It's, it's, I think that that message is about not worrying about the technical yes. details. It's yeah. about the higher level artistic side of understanding why we're doing what we're doing Absolutely. and the story you want to tell. Mm -hmm. And so I think that really falls in line with what you're saying there too, is let's not worry about the technical details. Let's worry about the cool artistic -y stuff. Yeah. And that's not for everybody. No. I, I don't, I mean, I often like, yeah, that seems cool. And then I get down and I'm sitting at my painting table and I'm like, okay, here, I'm going to feather this color into this. Yeah. You know, like I'm talking, I'm thinking in the technical standpoint. Yeah. It's very hard to not do that. Sure. The, the masters don't, or maybe they still do sometimes too, but I still have to think about the technical stuff a lot. Yeah. Which is a lot less fun. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe some people who are like nerdy and crunchy like to think about that stuff. That's true. Or maybe they think they like to think about that stuff. And then when it comes down to it, it's like, man, this sucks. It, it is just heavy weight. <laughs> yeah, it's heavy weight. <laughs> you don't, you don't want to like sit down and paint because you have that burden. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what technique I'm going to use to blend this particular part. Yeah. Spoilers. You can use them all. <laughs> right? Or you can use your fingers like Roman the Pot. Dang. Yeah. Did he, you see that video yeah. he posted? A I, video? I didn't see a video. It was on Instagram. It, it was just like a, a shot of him painting the, the gorilla bust mm -hmm. with um, yellows and purples with his fingers. Yes. That was part of a one-on-one, -on -one, right? Yeah, you know, with a student. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I didn't see the video though. That's cool. Yeah, it was just, you know, it was like a 15-second clip or whatever, and it was part of the the stages. Mm -hmm. It was it wasn't like I'm just choosing to finger paint this monkey. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a sexual in you. No. <laughs> I'm going to finger paint your monkey. <laughs> oh. In Project Mayhem, we... <laughs> yeah, you're this so meaningful. You're right. You're yeah. You too can finger paint your monkey, <laughs> or, or our monkey. <laughs> no. <laughs> um. It was. It wasn't like this was the whole step. Like I'm choosing to only finger paint this monkey. It was. <laughs> this was the first stage of a full paint job. Yeah. 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 I'm, and... not, I'm not sure if the finger painting couldn't have been accomplished with just a cruddy brush, um, but it just you know. Well, he, he was proving that maybe, I don't know what he was proving. I didn't I, watch the video. <laughs> I, I think it's, uh, I, I, you know, this is one of those things like art is always open to interpretation by yeah. the viewer. Yeah. And I viewed it as him, him breaking down the technical norms to force your brain to think in a different way to achieve a similar result. Okay. And so if you're focused on the tool that you have and it's, not with something you're familiar with and up using that tool with just your fingers and some dabbing them in yellow paint and putting it on the mini, you're taking down the barriers of how you're supposed to do something. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm, I can't accomplish that with just my fingers mm -hmm. in one color. But what you can do is you can look at that 30,000 foot view and what am I trying to achieve, which is really focusing on the lighting and the, uh, um, what you're bringing, you're, want to bring the eye to and, and mm -hmm. recalling attention to that the color usage and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think that was, oh. that's how I interpret it. Maybe Roman's going to be like, no, wrong. No, <laughs> no, you misinterpreted me. No. <laughs> no, no, no. So what I liked about that was when you saw the finger painted monkey, it was, it, it looked bad, obviously, because it's a finger and it's like, all oh, these colors are all weird and stuff. But in the end product, after he refines it, you can see all those hues yeah. and where they were and they look natural yes. or they look fun and cool. And it's like, wow, that's so cool that you can take all of these, you know, seemingly discordant colors and then marry them together into a cohesive scheme that looks like a national animal and isn't like a clown. Right. Um, so that, that was really cool to see the end product. Yeah. Darn it, Roman. Why are you, in, why, you, why are you in Germany? Didn't come to Minnesota. Aren't you or 
by the time this is out, have you had a discussion with him? I thought you said you're going to do a little fun time with Roman. <laughs> fun time with Roman. <laughs> uh, next week, I am chatting with him. And it was funny, you uh, you tagged me in his giveaway, and you're yeah. like, you can win a model. And he, he responded to that because I recently bought one of his miniatures. What? And I have it at my house. Um, I want to steal it. Yeah. I bought it, his sepulchral guard model that he had. Um, fortunately, dude, I don't know. The mailman fucking molested the box. Dude, you should have seen the state of the box. It oh, was, no. It was insane. So the model was a little broken. Um, but I A just, little broken? Yeah. I fixed it, though, with super glue, and it's fine. Um, okay. But, yeah, it was. Uh, it's cool. It's cool to hold it in your hand and see in... And just kind of like look over the colors he used and stuff like that. But yeah, wow. I bought it for the video that I'm doing where I interview him. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Do you need to, are you going to try to paint a sepulchral guard like that? Like that? Is that what the video is? Don't, oh. put, don't put that on me. Oh. No, I want to. <laughs> I've got some if you want whatever model it was that he did. Do, why do you do this to me? Because <laughs> I am full of great ideas and I just give them to you. I wanted to finish this idea fast. <laughs> now I got to paint a freaking mini. <laughs> All right. All right, I got another idea for you though. Okay. All right. When, you when, keep, when you're interviewing or talking with Roman, I want you to find a t- time to slip in. Uh, Roman, can I finger paint your monkey? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm excited for this interview with him, and it's gonna be good. I'm not. Gonna, I won't say anything about it, but I hope I hope it'll be good. I hope I'll respect his time, and it'll be a good conversation. Yeah, it's good. That's good. I like that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Are we done talking about artsy fartsy? We're not talking about artsy fartsy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's only fair that we con- we this this wagon ride that we just went on. Yeah. It ended at the the Roman Lapot Station Grand yeah. Junction. I think that is very telling. Yes. Yes, because like when I think of artists, what you messing with my chair for? I'm not messing with it. You are just messing all the arms up. It's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um. It's only fair that we end with Roman in this discussion because when I think of true miniature painting artists, he is as artsy as they get. Yep. Absolutely. And I mean that in the highest compliment. Yep. Um, I totally understand what you mean. So let's let's kick this. Car- <laughs> <laughs> Let's kick this wagon. Let's kick this wagon off. wheel. Let's kick this wagon wheel and we'll finger paint the monkey. <laughs> That's it for our topic discussion. Now onto the news, which we have none of, but I thought of one item. Um, I sent you a video maybe a week and a half ago about, it was titled like four grown men spend $3,000 on plastic miniatures. Yeah. And it's from a YouTube channel called Magic Carp Used Fly. Um, which is just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. <laughs> it's a video game channel, but you know, it has an interest in board games and, and now miniature war games. Um, big channel too. Um, and I forget who sent me the video, but I watched it and I was just like freaking blown away. Yeah. I was so happy because uh, the video was formatted wonderfully and it's going to be in several parts. The first part being the collection and the purchasing of the model and the, d- d- the decision making about like, what do I buy? And how do I build my army? All from the perspective of someone who's new to it. And it's so hard as a person who's new to a subject to make a video interesting for someone who's familiar with the subject. Right. Right. It's like, I don't want to watch some noob build a warmer 40 K list. I know how to do that, yeah. but it's like, yes, he's a beginner, but the video is just so freaking good that even if you know everything about 40 K, it's like, you just feel if it, it brings you back to when you were experiencing yeah. it. Yeah. And they get those those rose tinted glasses of first yeah, timer and yeah. ah, I'm gonna buy these three hundred little tyranid models and I'm just gonna eat all the brains. <laughs> it's gonna be so great. Like you, you feel that energy. Yeah, uh, and that's so hard to do. Yeah. with the video. Um, it is. So I really loved it, and I th- I mean maybe it's not newsworthy, but I just wish there was more content that existed like that for miniatures, whether or not it's forty k related or not. That's one of the bigger subjects that makes sense. Um, it was just so good to see that kind of great content being made for us. And you should definitely go watch it. It'll be in the show notes for sure. Yeah. And that was part, I think it's, they said it's a three or four part series. Yeah. Yeah. They're building a table. Yeah. They're renting a space just to shoot 
games of 40k in it yeah and i'm just like these guys are freaking serious they're putting money down on this yeah this is legit i think what really resonated with me is they use a lot of really smart um uh kind of what am i trying to say what are the the movies about a real thing why my brain not working documentary documentary okay documentary they use a lot of like traditionally successful styles in storytelling yeah. in a documentary style. Yeah. So it, it really feels natural. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it feels like even if you know the topic, it's still very entertaining. If you know nothing about it, this video will tell you, will bring you along for the ride about what 40 K is. Yeah. And it's, it just works on so many levels that it's just very, very entertaining. So I'm excited for the next, next versions or whatever Dude. episode two. Or, yeah. Yeah, now that you mentioned that, they introduce the characters one by one along in the story. And like they have interview segments of each of them, but you don't see an interview uh, question from them until they're introduced in the story. Right. Right. So you have the main character who is Magikarp used fly, and he, he meets his first friend because he, he goes to his house and they drive to go to meet the third friend. Yeah. And you don't see them until they're slowly introduced one by one and the fourth one finally at the very end. Um, so yeah, it, it, is, it does follow typical documentary style videos and it definitely shows and it feels like you're watching something, something good. That was a great, um, great last minute addition to news because yeah. I think that is a really good news. If we were like, you know, really legitimate podcasters, we would have, have made notes of that when you brought that video to my attention. <laughs> but we but we're not. We didn't, do that. <laughs> we didn't do that. All right, welcome to the end of the podcast. Thank you for hanging out and listening to us drone on about our opinions about art as it relates to miniature painting. Yeah. We appreciate it. We didn't wear uh, headphones. No. So there's probably several times where we lean away from the mic. Yeah. And then come back to but it. But we're professionals, so we never do that. Yeah. You're right. I never just like randomly burp into the mic. Uh, don't pet the freaking <laughs> thing. What's wrong with you? It's wet. <laughs> why is it wet? I don't know why it's wet. It's, <laughs> it smells like Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start licking it soon. <laughs> Let us know what you guys think of this uh, locale. I mean, it's a uh, it's a card table. Uh, we're going to we're going to upgrade some of the stuff around here so it's going to be fancy. Yeah, but yeah, we were we were considering shooting the podcast um in this space, maybe somewhere over there, maybe this is our backdrop or who knows. Yeah, we don't know what we're going to do. We got we got a lot of space. There's so much room for activities down here. Oh my gosh. Dude, yes. does this look like ping pong table spot though? Absolutely. Dude, we But if yeah, if if ping pong goes there, nothing else goes there. I know. The pong, the pong trumps all. Yes. I will murder you it won't even be close (laughs) it won't even be close you can't even handle my serve oh jesus oh jesus (laughs) man all right this is gonna have to happen i guess (laughs) definitely yeah yeah but the thing about the beauty about ping pong tables is they fold up and they wheel out and they can go back in my utility room sure that is of course if something else isn't living here permanently like a podcast set true which you could put away but it's kind of a pain in the ass yeah tear up and put down as i've I'm sorely familiar with it. <laughs> um, you know what I'm concerned about this ping pong thing is that immediately we are going to realize which one of us is the better player. Right. And it's just going to be a 20 to 10 game. Yeah. <laughs> For like six months. Yeah. It's it's just going to be a fight. Six months. No, it's, it's see, I'm not thinking of one game. I'm thinking of like. No, I mean the first game. The, oh, the, yeah. The first five points, we're going to know which one of us is yes. actually better. Yes. Or it's not, and we're going to be equally matched, and that'd be a fairy that story. Would, that, fairy story, it fairy be, tale. It would be a fairy story. <laughs> that would. That's not going to happen. Maybe, yeah, maybe it is like a mirror match. Like we just make the exact same move, <laughs> and we have the exact. How much do you rely on spin? Um, I crush the ball, so I don't rely on spin. Long. Okay, cool, cool. That's good because I don't know how to deal with spin very well. Okay. Oh, I can backspin the crap out of it, but okay. it's yeah. I that's a. The, the old dudes that I played with, that I mean, that's how old dudes play. Yeah. They just manipulate the hell out of the ball with spin. Yeah. And so I have, and I, it's just trying, it's all about angle sure. of the pushback. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't do that right, you look like an idiot. Because yeah. Because you'll shoot it straight in the air. Yeah, or straight right in the air, back. and it comes right back to them, and they just crush you with yes. it. So. Or or directly back uh right into the net right into the net yeah yeah it's like my racket was so open and somehow i still went right yeah. in the net yeah this is now a uh table tennis podcast uh brought to you by 
What are our podcasts? Ping. Ping and Pong. Ping and Pong. <laughs> Ping is a golf brand, which is odd. Um, all right. Well, okay. That's enough of that talk. Now I'm just super excited. We're going to have to go to Shields and get a ping pong table after this. <laughs> well, thank you for listening. If you want to support the podcast, there's a number of ways that you can do that. You can buy this lovely shirt that John is hiding under his zipper sweater of our sick <laughs> logo. You can support us on Patreon, where we do extended episodes. We critique one of our patrons' uh, miniatures in an episode. And you can also give us uh, topic suggestions for videos to discuss. The one today was from a patron. So that's a way you can support us. Also, leaving us a review on any place where you listen to podcasts, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, whatever it is. Um, I was reading the reviews on uh, Apple Podcasts when I was in Miami just because I had it up. And uh, I mean, they're all nice. I know. They're all so nice nice. people. Yeah, they're very nice people. Um, So yeah, if if you want to do that, that helps us get more exposure. And of course, sharing the podcast with your nerd friends. Yeah, sharing it, sharing it, inviting other nerd friends to the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. It's cool. We cracked 2,000 people in that group. Very nice. That is crazy. We had to approve individually. Yes. 2,000 people. Oh, I I had to... I declined two people this week. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, I'm a, I'm like a detective <laughs> of, you of, of Facebook BS <laughs> of people that definitely aren't there to do the right thing. Oh. Um, yeah, so, but that's pretty good. Our numbers are just like for like two in a month that I don't let in, and that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Scott just opens the damn floodgates. Yeah, approve all. <laughs> yeah, approve all. <laughs> Gosh, um, what else? What else do we have? We talked about the we talked about the uh, the painting class, mm-hmm. LA class. If you're in the area, check it out. Yeah, I think it's May second and third. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're excited to go to sunny California, mm-hmm. um, Burbank, California, just north of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. So chill with us for two days. The space, the store is freaking amazing. Yeah, and we're gonna most importantly about the location is they have our own separate room yeah. closed off to the store. Uh, the last thing I want to do is teach a class when there's like games going on and patrons of the store running in and people out. People yelling about Pokemon. Mm, yeah, the Pokemans. Dude. It just, I don't want to, I want to deal with that. But yeah, we, you will only hear us and see us. We will lock the door. You yes. can't leave. Nope. There'll be a pee bucket in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and then the building will burn down and everyone will die. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but, <laughs> but, well, you could get, eat tendies. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you burn a lot. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, we just consider them buffalo attendees. <laughs> <laughs> They're extra hot. <laughs> That's going to do it for this one, guys. We will catch you on the flippity flop. <laughs>